Okay, let's talk about LN. Today it's Wednesday the 6th, and we begin. All right, kindly consider the following function. Let's say I call it um, cap F. Cap F of X is the area from 1 to X under the curve 1 over T, the hyperbola. And I want to know what this function looks like. Can I graph it? Can I get some values off of it? Does it have special properties? For example, what's f prime? Do you know it? What's the derivative of this function? Turns out this is going to be some famous function. I don't know its name yet. We're going to find out. Well, you don't know the name. OK. So let's find out what this famous function is. First of all, it's easy to figure out the derivative. Because remember, the second fundamental theorem of calculus says how to differentiate Plug in what? 1 over x, exactly. If this is more complicated, like x squared, you get 1 over x squared times 2x, the chain rule, right? But if it's just x, just plug it in, you're done. All right, so something whose derivative is 1 over x. Or, in other words, the integral of 1 over x is this function. Ah. So we're going to get a derivative out of this. We're going to get an integral out of this, a new set of tools. All right, let's see some other information we can get out of this. How about we plug in some numbers for x? and see if we can figure out what this curve looks like. Uh, let's make a little table. Yeah. What? Oh, no, yeah. It's not axes, though. It's not axes. OK, so I'm going to plug in different values of x, and I'm going to figure out cap f of x. Now, the easy, ans the easy one to answer is if I plug in 1, right? Why? What's the area from 1 to 1? Zero, that's easy. But what if I want from 1 to 2? Well, that's not so obvious. How about I do 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8? I'm going to jump around a little bit. You'll see why. Um, all right, well, let's ask Hal. All right, Hal, where are you? Bing. Bing. Oh, the archive thing? Yeah, well. OK, so anyway. So I'm going to do second 7. Do it over here. Second 7 of, um, what is it, 1 over t with respect to t from 1 to 2. And now I'm going to do a diamond enter because Hal knows the answer, and I, want, I don't want to, to give it away. I'm just going to get some decimals, OK? And I get 0 0.693, which is a very famous uh, irrational number. In fact, it's a transcendental number. What's, do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. What, what makes a number transcendental? Do you know the difference? What's, what's, what's a rational number? Give me a rational number, any rational number. Two, right. Uh, why do you know it's rational? It's a decimal that terminates or repeats. By the way, they all repeat, by the way. Isn't it really like 2.000000? Right, so any repeating decimal is rational. Any non-repeating, non-terminating Decimal is irrational, like rad 2. The irrational numbers have a subset in them that can't be written algebraically. Like rad 2, you know what it means. It's square root of 2, right? But some numbers are irrational, and they don't have a way of writing it algebraically, so we give them names, like pi. Those are the transcendentals, OK? That's a transcendental number, an irrational number that cannot be calculated algebraically. Um, e is another such number, OK? So we're going to be talking about these numbers. And 0 0.693 has something to do with E, believe it or not. What's a transcendental number? I still don't know. Is it? OK, we'll see. All right, let's see. Gretchen, 230. Candice, 230. You've got mail. Me? Yeah. Oh, who's in Uh, Guidance, I guess, Slater. Yeah, give this one to Gretchen, please. All right, I'm not going. You're going to see me here today, Gretchen. I wasn't in school. OK, let's run it for three. What do we get for three? We get, all right, shh, listen up, 1.099, OK. So uh, 1.099. You're going to see a pattern here. OK, whoops. What is wrong with my marker? 099. OK. What if I plug in four? Let's do it. 4 gives 1.386. 6 gives, oh, 
Whoops. Oh, jeez, you didn't see that. I didn't see that part. Damn it. Okay, second seven, one over T, with respect to T, from um, zero to four, right? One to four, one to four. Yeah, I know, but I want, I wanted the numbers up here. Four, diamond enter, sorry. And six and eight, right? That's what I wanted? Okay, so six. I know. It's damaged for life. Okay, and? And you get, come on out today, 2.079. Okay, let's write those down. Okay, so it's 1.386, 1 1.792, and 2.079 because these are famous numbers. But <laughs> they are famous numbers, by the way. All right, so notice the following pattern. Are you ready? Cap F of 6, this here, is that the same as cap F of 2 plus cap F of 3? If I take this one plus this one, these two, do I get that? Except for maybe a little roundoff error, but even with roundoff error, it's good. Okay. What about this one? Is cap F of 2 cap F of 8 minus cap F of 4? It, do you get this when you take this minus this? Right, that's division, right? Do you see the pattern that's going on here? This is multiplication. 2 times 3, this division, 8 divided by 4. How about this one? Cap F of 4, is it 2 times cap F of 2? Yes. Is double this, this? Yes. Doesn't this sound familiar? Yes. This pattern, you should know this pattern from another function that you know, or a class of functions. Logs. logs. These are logs, right? What's the log of a product? What's the log of 2 times 3? It's the sum of the log of 2 and the log of 3. What's the log of 8 divided by 4? It's the log of 8 minus the log of 4, the difference of the logs. The sum of the product is the sum of the logs. The difference, the, pro, the um, log of the quotient is the difference of the logs. The log of a power, 2 to the 2, is the exponent times the log of the base. Ah, so this is some kind of log. All right, the question is, though, what log? So this is what I know. I know that it's log base something of x. I don't know the base. If I knew the base, I'd know the function. Let's figure this out. All right, next page. If cap f of x is the area from 1 to x under the hyperbola 1 over t is log base b of x. I don't know what the b is. Could be log base 10, common logs. Log base e, natural logs. Log base 2, for all I know. Log base 1 half, I don't know. Now, remember what logs mean. If I, take, if I do log base 2, uh, sorry, log base 10 of 100, what is that? Do you know? You remember how logs work? What's log base 10 of 100? 10. Nope. This is the same question. 10 to the what is 100? 10. 2. That's what a log is. It's the exponent. Right, remember logs? You ever do this stuff? Yeah. Right? Okay. So, um, what about this one? Log base anything of 1 is what? 0, right? Because b to the 0 is 1. This statement and this statement are the same thing, just written in a different order. If b to the 0 is 1, the, the uh, log base b of 1 is 0, right? Okay, so remember, we got that. Didn't we get that? If we plug in 1, we get 0. That's part of being a log also. All right, this is good. Now, what I need to know is when, uh, what is B? Hmm. Well, is this a true statement? Log, well, you'll tell me. What's log base B of B? Log base B of B is what? In other words, B to the what? is b. It's 1, right? All right, so that's how you're going to figure it out. You're going to graph this as y1, and you're going to see when it equals 1. When the y values are equal to 1, what's the x value? That's the base. When the x value equals the base is when the y is 1 for this function. 
All right, and we're out of time, so that's that. Okay. Yeah, well, not quite out of time. Okay, we still got a little bit there. You know what? I'm going to store it right there. Okay, so we'll solve this. We'll solve this graphically. We'll graph this as y1. We'll graph this as y2. We'll find that b is e. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Okay, bye-bye, YouTube.